The greatest credit bubble in history will pop and the stock market will crash, according to this guy. Today, I read a mountain of bad news. To start with, I read an article on Yahoo Finance put out by Reuters and written by Divide Barbusia and Carolina Mandel, titled, Black Swan Hedge Fund Says Fed Rate Cuts Will Signal Market Crash. The authors of this article referenced Mark Spitzenegel from the Universa Hedge Fund as saying, people think it's a good thing that the Federal Reserve is dovish and they're going to cut interest rates, but they're going to cut interest rates when it's clear the economy is turning into a recession and they will be cutting interest rates in a panicked fashion when this market is crashing. Well, my friends, here are my thoughts. There are people out there who think we are in a recession right now and the government simply moved the goalposts to define a recession. Maybe some of you are in that camp. Now, some investors believe we will never see a stock market crash because the Fed won't let that happen, especially during an election year. Many believe the Fed will always come to the rescue with quantitative easing. Even if we do enter an ugly recession, there is no guarantee the stock market is going to crash. The stock market is so disconnected from reality, in my opinion. It may not matter what is going on with average Americans who have very little exposure to the stock market. Most of the wealth in the world is held by a relatively small group of wealthy people. Now, Mark Spitzenegel went on to say, It's not different this time. Higher interest rates will eventually pop the greatest credit bubble in history. I'll share my opinion. Interest rates are not high right now. They are nowhere near where they were in the 1980s. These higher interest rates have done very little to tame real estate markets in some parts of America. You haven't seen car dealers slashing prices and offering crazy good incentives to get vehicles sold. You haven't been hearing about home builders slashing prices to pre-pandemic levels and doing whatever is possible to attract buyers. People still have access to credit, even though that credit is costing more than it did in recent years. This isn't slowing some consumers down one bit. Many feel entitled and they will spend and worry about how to pay it off later. That's just the American way for some individuals. As interest rates go up, we hear about new products to help consumers buy things. Instead of the 72-month car loan, we now have the 84-month car loan or the 96-month car loan or the 108-month car loan. Look it up for yourself the 108-month car loan actually exists. We also have buy now, pay later loans for people who are maxed out on their credit cards. Many consumers will spend regardless of what is going on with interest rates. The thing is, higher rates are starting to impact some businesses because it is getting more expensive to do business. This may be why we are hearing about so many layoffs in the news in 2024. I realize unemployment is still low, but for how long? When people no longer have a job and fewer companies are hiring, then what? I think some people will still maintain their lifestyle with the use of credit for as long as they can. Is any of this going to crash the stock market? It may not. Some stocks don't trade based on fundamentals anymore. They often trade on hype. No one has a crystal ball. No one knows what is going to happen next month or next year. Anyone who claims to know with certainty is delusional. I read some of the comments beneath this article. One commenter said, We are already in a recession. Credit card delinquency rates have hit the worst levels since 2012. More layoffs this year. High mortgage rates are hitting new home construction and builders are pulling back on projects. I see Big Short 2.0 on the horizon. The next commenter said, Markets will crash as well as the world's economy when America can't service its mega trillions in national debt. Someone else in the comment section said, Yes, sir, things are going great. Everyone makes 20 bucks an hour. Social Security is up 3.2%. Uncle Sam says inflation is at 3.9%. Yet, food doubled, home insurance doubled, car insurance up 20%, and there is no end in sight. All that big money you have buys you nothing. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Here's another interesting article with some ominous news. This article was on Yahoo Finance, put out by Reuters, entitled, Fed Says 1,804 Banks and Other Institutions Tapped Emergency Lending Facility. 
According to the author who referenced information from the Federal Reserve, some 1,804 depository institutions tapped the emergency lending facility set up last March in the wake of Silicon Valley Bank's collapse, amounting to about 20% of all eligible firms. About 95% of the borrowers, which included banks, credit unions, savings associations and branches, and agencies of foreign banks, had less than $10 billion in assets. Well, my friends, I found this information to be very interesting. I'd love to know how much junk paper some of these banks are holding right now. What is their exposure to the commercial real estate market? How many people or businesses are they working with who are currently delinquent on loans? How many banks bought long-term bonds without worrying about interest rate risks? I'd really love to see behind the curtain to know what is really going on here in America with a lot of these financial institutions. Maybe Jamie Dimon has been selling his shares because he knows something we don't. You really have to wonder. I read some of the comments beneath this article. One commenter said, the economy melts down when the majority of people have reached their borrowing capacity, overextended their debt capacity, and lenders have overextended their loan capacity. But money out of thin air will magically appear to save the day once again. And now you know why financial institutions and Wall Street don't care how irresponsibly they behave and how sloppy they get. Well, my friends, he may be right. Time will tell. The next commenter said, Consumer debt is a Mount St. Helens on the horizon, and more banks will be gone. Inflation is a forever tax, and this administration is spending taxpayer money like a drunken sailor. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, Everything is fine. You stop worrying. In my opinion, it is nice to hear a little optimism sometimes because it gives me a good laugh. Today, I read another article. This one was on foxbusiness.com, written by Aislinn Murphy, entitled, Express Bankruptcy Means 95 Store Closures in 30 States and D.C. Here are the numbers. According to the author, the planned store closures came amid the clothing retailer's larger announcement on Monday that it had submitted a petition for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Apparently, the retailer has faced a challenging commercial environment brought on by both broader economic and retail-specific market pressures in recent years. I have to wonder, how much of this is due to retail theft? I also have to wonder, how much of this has to do with consumers ordering more online? Some people don't want to go to the mall anymore. They would rather shop from their couch and get their package the next day. I feel bad for the owners of the commercial real estate where these stores are leaving. It may be hard to fill those empty storefronts. We keep hearing about a commercial real estate crisis that is brewing. This story provides an example of property owners who will soon be bringing in less rent each month. Yet, they are likely paying higher property insurance, higher property taxes, and more money to keep the buildings maintained. I'm sure glad I don't own any commercial real estate right now, especially malls. I read another depressing story today. This one was on Yahoo Finance, put out by Smart Asset, and written by Eric Reed, titled, 40% of Workers Forced into Early Retirement, How to Stay Ahead of the Curve. The author referenced a new study from Edward Jones, which revealed financial advisors across the industry report that 40% of their retiree clients were forced into retirement. When I read this, I couldn't believe it. I would have never guessed the percentage would be that high. The author said, most retirees lose their jobs late in life with fewer good options for finding new employment, so they drop out of the workforce and enter retirement. When I read this, I wondered, how is this going to work in the future since we know very few people have adequate retirement savings? Maybe some people right now who are forced into retirement have a pension or have a decent amount of money saved because they benefited from some amazing gains in the real estate market and or the stock market. What about some younger generations who aren't able to save anything and aren't able to buy a home? Some are barely scraping by each month. The years and decades go by very fast. Before you know it, they will be at the age where they are forced into retirement with few job prospects, and then what? No pension, 
no retirement savings, and no job. If their parents are deceased, where do they go? What do they do? You could really lose sleep thinking about what the future holds for some Americans. I truly worry. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. One commenter said, I'm nearing the end of my career, and if you are talking about salaried people only, I'd estimate higher than 40%. Everybody has their date on the calendar when you get the tap on the shoulder and get told it's time to go. It doesn't matter if you are the janitor or the CEO. The best advice is to plan ahead. Start saving very early. I did, and I'm ready to go. Another commenter said, Unfortunately, laws against age discrimination are practically useless since employers are very treacherous, and if they want to fire or lay off a person because of their age, they find other reasons. The only way the government could fix this situation is if they implemented laws that require a certain percentage of the workforce of companies to be over a certain age. But unfortunately, I have not yet seen anything like that happening or being discussed. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, I am guessing it is higher than 40%. Most of the people I know were forced out. They were given poor reviews, asked to take a package, etc. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.